Good morning. I'd like to welcome you in the name of Christ as we come into his presence to receive his gifts. And one of the gifts that we're going to receive today is the communion. So if you're sitting closest to the center aisle, if you haven't done so yet, please locate a fellowship pad and sign your name and um, indicate in that uh, pad if you'll be partaking of the communion. And then pass it to the people sitting next to you in the pew. If you're watching us online, you can go to stjohnsconover.com and download a copy of the bulletin so you can participate more fully in the service. VBS, Vacation Bible School, is coming up at the end of the month. July the 31st is uh, 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 first night, and uh, more information and the sign-up stuff is in the bulletin. Blood Drive is coming up tomorrow, Monday, July the 11th. A little bit more information uh, about that is in the bulletin as well. That's it for the announcements, so let's begin to praise God as we sing Thy Strong Word.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed of what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present internal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may be life in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in your deep compassion, you rescue us from whatever may hurt us. Teach us to love you above all things and to love our neighbors as ourselves. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may take a seat. Our first reading for this, the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, is from the book of Leviticus, chapter 19. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge, Neither shall you gather the gleanings after you, your harvest, and you shall not strip your vineyard bare. Neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall not remain with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind. But you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of God. Thanks. New Testament reading is from the letter to the Colossians, chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother. To the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the, in the word of the truth, the gospel, which has come to you, 
as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of God. Please stand now to the reverence for the gospel, the holy gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. And behold, a lawyer stood up to him to test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day, he took out the two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him. And whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may take a seat as we sing, Lord of glory, you have bought us.
would you respond to a statement, I am working hard to get to heaven, or I hope I'm good enough to make it? Well, I think most of us would say, as a Lutheran, that no, it's not going to work that way. Whatever you do is not going to make any difference. It's not going to earn you eternal life. You might recall from the small catechism, I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. We can't even believe by our own strength, much less do anything else, right? In the gospel text for today, we hear these words. A lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, what would you expect Jesus to say to that? Probably my trained mind, your trained mind would say something condemning works, right? Pointing out that there is nothing that you can do to inherit eternal life. Reference the gospel. But now, Jesus does the unexpected. He references the law. What does the law say you should do? Maybe Jesus is setting this lawyer up. Maybe is this lawyer, after he lists all the things that he is supposed to do, and assuming that, well, he's done it all, maybe that's when Jesus will pounce on him. Well, sure enough, the lawyer does a good job, and he gives this concise list, very scriptural, love the Lord and love the neighbor. That sums up the whole law. It's what a person should do. But Jesus does not say what we Lutherans expect him to say. And what we, would we good Lutherans expect Jesus to say? Well, you are a poor, miserable sinner. You cannot do anything. That would be works righteousness. Instead, Jesus says, do this and you will live. And then he tells us a story about this man who is traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. And as you know, in the Old Testament, Jerusalem was the center of the religious life of the people, of the faithful. That's where the temple was, the house of God. It was a place of worship, a place of prayer. And so we have this man leaving the holy city, the place of God's presence, and coming back to his daily life. And on his way home to Jericho, robbers, they get a hold of this man. They seize him. They strip him. They beat him half to death. And they go away. And they leave him there to die. And then three people pass by this dying man. And all three were returning from the holy city of Jerusalem, the place of God's house, where they 
bowed down in his presence where they prayed, they worshipped, they meditated on all the promises and the commandments of God. They did the right thing in Jerusalem. And then this is what happens. First of, all, first of all, there's a priest. And he saw the man and he immediately got on the other side of the road, as far away as possible. Now, the priest was a member of the clergy, and he was entrusted with the spiritual care of the people. It was spiritual needs that he addressed, not physical. That's probably what the priest thought when he passed by and he avoided dealing with the physically afflicted man. So he just passed by. I think his excuse might have been, well, this is a, this is a physical thing. I'm, I'm no doctor. I deal with the problems of the soul, the spirit. Then came along another Jew, a Levite, and uh, that's a, a people that are well versed in the word. They're full of wisdom gathered from the Holy Scripture. And this Levite was no different than the priest a few minutes ago. For whatever reason, he too went by to the other side of the road. He passed by the dying man. Maybe his mind was somewhere else. And being a man well read in the word, maybe he was meditating on the, you know, theology and stuff like that and the things that are a lot more important. And once again, he was no expert in helping uh, dying people on the side of the road. And then came a man who was, in the eyes of the Jews, a reject. And he wasn't rejected because of, of his personal shortcomings, but for a simple reason that he was a Samaritan. Now, the Jews and Samaritans, and we covered it uh, a couple of weeks ago, it's not that they hated each other, but basically they did. I mean, they learned how to coexist, but they couldn't stand each other. And the difference in this man can be summed up by this one word. He was the one who did. So the Samaritan kneeled by the wounded man. He knew what it's like to be rejected. He knew what it's like to be left alone. He intimately lived the life of being unwanted, unwelcome, even hated. The Samaritan did all he can do to heal the wounds. Then he brought him to a place of rest. Even gave money and instructions to the innkeeper to continue to provide for the wounded man even promised that he would come back and repay and check on him. And with that, he gave up much of his time, lots of money. But more importantly, the Samaritan took pity on the wounded man. He did something. And Jesus held this Samaritan up for us as a standard to follow, to imitate, to do likewise. Now, as we've said before, we are not comfortable with this do this instructions. We're afraid if we do something, it might smack off works righteousness. Or maybe we're going to do it so we can be acknowledged and thanked 
or maybe we do it because it makes us feel good, or maybe we do it because somehow we think that it's going to earn us favors from God. If we do something, it will earn us salvation. But that's not the point, is it? Because the scripture is clear and Jesus is always clear about the fact that you cannot do anything for your salvation because it's his job to do the work of earning you eternal life. That's not the point of this text. For it was you and me who lay on the side of the road, beaten down by sin, robbed by Satan, and left there to die. Jesus has compassion on you and me and for everybody else. For the road is littered with the dead and the dying. Some on the side of the road and the walking dead passing by. Now, you and I could not go to him, and so he has come to the place where you and I were. He has died for you, and it is by the Holy Spirit baptizing you into Christ's sin-atoning death on the cross that your wounds and my wounds are healed. This Jesus lifts you up and breathes new life into you through his absolution pronounced to you. That's soothing you with the oil of gladness. Jesus is the one who pours out his blood for you as he lavishly cleanses your wounds of body and soul with his body and with his blood. Jesus picks you up and carries you to his father's house where the Holy Spirit grants the gift of absolution. Here the, in the church, the Lord is present with his people for their good. And he promises to be with you not only today, not only in the day, but also in the darkest nights, in the darkest moments of your life. God is present with you and for your good as he binds up the brokenhearted with his word and his sacraments. Fear not, the Lord is with you. The good Samaritan who finds us on the side of the road, who saves us from eternal death, who heals our wounds, who brings us to the place of rest and comfort, and who promises to come back, to return, is Jesus himself. That is the true teaching of this parable. It is about Christ and his love for us. It's about his compassion, his mercy, his care, his presence, his promise to come back. And note that these words do not merely describe the feelings. They're active verbs describing what Christ has done and continues to do. As you leave this place of comfort and rest, be assured that Jesus lives as God of love for you. He spoke his words to you this morning so that you would not only know about his love, but so that you would also live the life of love that he gave you, so that you would also go and do likewise. You see, you and I should not fear the word do. Now, if you do for God and others, 
Will it earn you salvation? No, that's not the point. No, it's not going to save you because you are already saved. So don't be afraid to go out in the world and do something. Do something good. It's not going to save you, but it will make your life good. It will make other people's life good. That's when you encounter a neighbor who is in need, and I think most of you understand who your neighbor is. Remember to do good. Once again, it has nothing to do with your salvation, but it's something that Jesus knows will make your life and their lives better. For it was Jesus who picked you up on the side of the road where Satan left you to die. It was Jesus who continues to heal your wounds. He gave you life. He will someday come back and get you so that you could be with him forever. So now, as you encounter that person in need, don't be afraid to do something. Amen. Please uh, turn to your hymnals. I mean, hymnals. Well, you can. Back cover if you want to. But uh, it's also in the bulletin. Stand up, and we're going to recite the, uh, the creed, Nicene Creed, printed there. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I'd like to remind you that you can give any time at stjohnsconover.com forward slash donate, but you can give it right now also to our uh, ushers.
the response came of God of mercy, God of might. Now for the prayer of the church. Father in heaven, we confess that our good deeds apart from Christ amount to nothing. Yet we rejoice that because your son has died and risen for us, you promise that our righteousness exceeds even that of the scribes and Pharisees because we know the hope that you have laid up for us in heaven. Let others see in us a confident faith in the Lord Jesus and a caring love for all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father in heaven, by your grace we have died to sin, yet sin continues to overpower us. Bless all those who gladly hear the word and fill us with a repentant faith that knows that we have been buried with Christ through baptism into his death and we have been given new life. Fill us with a Samaritan's joy in helping those in need, no matter what the cost to ourselves. We pray this also today for the members of Living Hope Lutheran Church in Stafford, Virginia. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father in heaven, as you have granted us to live in a nation where your people may still gather without fear, bless our leaders with your wisdom and guard us from the rising ungodliness in our land, that your gospel may be preached boldly and continue to bear fruit and grow. Protect the peacemakers, our law enforcement officers, and our military, including Justin Miller, Bradley Hatley, Nathan Wright, so Austin Bandy, Jake Bandy, Morgan Bassett, Landon Trevett, Evan Mojica, Derek Smith, Jake Pippen, and James Cleveland. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, remember the sick. Chuck Bolliger, Michael Sigmund, Dennis London, Peggy Polomsky, 
Jeff Watson, Jack Smith, Aiden Cox, Phyllis Baumgartner, Cindy Eckert, Kim Ramsey, Tanya Lambert, Tracy Boston, Lewis Holler, Melissa Goebel, Lindsay Davis, David Reese, Geraldine Hahn, Bob and Martha Baumgartner, Philip Osborne, AC and Rosalie Yunt, Jason Sigmund, Lynn and Leroy Lale, George Huffman, Bill and Shirley Rocket, Betty Boston, Tina Parkhurst, David Reese, Becky Ramsey, Pam Walker, Alex Yunt, Cameron Yunt, Russell Sigmund, Tommy Huffman, Linda Mundy, Shelby Knipe, Christopher Sigmund, E.J. Lyles, Donna Jones, Kathy Wallace, Nancy Hildebrand, Beverly Packett, Lori and Dwayne Beaver, Pat Hollow, Sarah Knipe, Butch McIntyre, Fred Crump, Diane Poovey, Teresa Johnson, Reginald and Linda Lineberger, Norma Martin, Rodney Engel, and uh, we also pray for those, for the family and friends of those who passed away, the family and friends of Jason Goodman, Joyce Waters, and Bob Bollinger. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father in heaven, you have been faithful to us who deserve none of your mercies. Lead us to receive them with grateful hearts and to be faithful unto death that we may receive the crown of eternal life. Hear us in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, through whom, with whom, and in whom be all honor and glory, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is thy new testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take and eat the body of Christ. Take and eat.
If you need to take communion at your pew, please stand or raise your hand. May this the true body and this the true blood of our Savior strengthen you and preserve the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart now in Christ's peace.
we stand now for prayer. O oh God, the Father, the fountain, the source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son to the, into the flesh, we thank you that for your sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And we sing our closing hymn, which is, Lord, whose love through humble service.
you may share God's peace. <laughs>